course, have you, you know seen the, the video are. of the pastor Anderson no. who, uh, who owns a construction company and he has to drive through these every day and he said stop searching my car so they beat him within an inch of his life I did not know that did, oh. he, did he bring an action against them did he get their videotapes? We need to get him back on about that. You know, we 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 cover this stuff, and then you know, it's it's in the rearview mirror, and we never look at it again. Uh, I, I want to shift gears into some other issues here in a moment with the limited time we have with Andrew Napolitano. His new book is out, doing quite well. Lies the government told you: Myth, Power, and the Deception uh, in American History. Judge Andrew P. Napolitano, forward by Congressman Ron Paul. Uh, but just in closing, the states are going to move to protect themselves. They are going bankrupt predominantly because of the illegals and, and, and the way they draw on uh, the welfare. We have sanctuary cities. We have Austin cops that have told me they won't arrest illegals for drunk driving because they just get released and they're basically told not to do it. My issue is the illegals now have more rights than citizens in these sanctuary cities. Wow. You know, uh, it's the world turned upside down. You and I talked about the census. Again, I'll give you an example. Knock on the door. It's a census taker and an FBI agent. The FBI agent is there to arrest you. The census taker is there to ask you questions. The census taker says, how many people live here and how many toilets do you have? The FBI agent says, you have a right to remain silent. So you have more rights as a person being arrested than you do as a person being visited by, by a bureaucrat from the census taker. The, the federal government has succeeded in turning the world upside down in terms of where freedom should be, in, where, in, in terms of where rights should be, and in terms of who can do what with their property. Uh, how do we stop this? We stop this by the things that you and I do, exposing what the government does. The camera is the new gun, filming what the government does, filming the the uh, negotiations away of our liberty and, and our property so that everybody can see how those who work for us have betrayed us and the Constitution they've sworn to uphold. Judge, and how about starting with getting our counties and cities back and making our police chiefs have equal enforcement of the law when they catch illegals without insurance, without driver's license. They arrest a citizen, they let the illegals go. When they catch an illegal drunk driving, uh, we're just going to have to keep them in jail as long as we keep an American citizen in jail. But Americans are seen as the big fat milk cows, regardless of what color we are, uh, to this system. Well, I, I don't know of these cases in wh of which you speak, Alex, in which Americans have been punished for longer than illegals. Are you, are you telling me that that the states have been forced to let illegals go who should be incarcerated because only the feds can incarcerate them? That's ridiculous. If an illegal breaks a state law, that illegal can be prosecuted and if if found guilty fairly in a court of law, because the Constitution protects persons, the illegal has the same due process rights as the rest of us. And when they get out of prison, like anybody else. And when they get out of prison, you can pull this up in the Houston Chronicle. In fact, pull up, I believe that the headline was 200,000 felons released, 200,000 illegal alien felons released in Texas. And I think that was 2004. I remember that headline. Here it is, ACLU, two-thirds of U.S. population lives in constitution-free zone. And then it goes over the map of the 100-mile uh, border zone, and uh, you can pull that up. Uh, but, but certainly this is a constitutional crisis uh, that we're going into because I understand you're a pure libertarian, a pure constitutionalist, and I respect that. And I understand the issues you're raising here, and, they, and they're all valid. But what do you do when the federal government's been seized by offshore banks and is at war against the Constitution? What do you do when the illegals are coming in and being forged into a political weapon uh, of the collectivist? The, the, the states formed the federal government and not the other way around. Reagan reminded us of that in the second paragraph of his, of his first inaugural address. The states gave limited, specific, precise, delegated, discrete powers, only 16 of them, to the federal government in the Constitution. Now, when I say this to gatherings all over the country, I say the following, and nothing gets a bigger applause than, than this. Power given by the states can be taken back. That's what you do. And when the Chuck Schumers and Lindsey Grahams of this world realize that their empire is shrinking, they will either comport themselves as those who love freedom, or they will have no empire over which to reign. And that brings me to our next issue, but I did want to give you the federal statute. Federal statute 8 CFR 287.1A1-3 defines the border zone for enforcement purposes as encompassing an area within 100 miles of the actual border. 
And they're now uh, all over the country building hardened checkpoints in the last two years where they search everyone. There's literally hundreds of YouTube videos of this, and you're an important and uh, influential guy, so I'm glad that you're on the case. Ask me, ask me if I know how members of Congress voted on that statute. I know the answer. Nobody, I don't know. Uh, nobody, how do they vote? Nobody voted. It's CFR. It's the Code of Federal Regulations. It's not the U.S. Code. That means Congress authorized a group of bureaucrats to promulgate these rules. Congress never even voted on the rules themselves. The Code of Federal Regulations is 10 times as long as the U.S. Code. The U.S. Code are the statutes Congress votes on. For whatever political or moral or immoral or legitimate or illegitimate reasons, it's what Congress debates on and votes on. The health care law is in the U.S. Code. The uh, judge far is the insidious one. That's the one that the bureaucrats have created. Yeah, it's their own little code that they can just add whatever they want to. We're about to go to break, but I want to start getting into this now. Uh, Bill Clinton came out and said, gee, I hope there doesn't have to be another Oklahoma City bombing for you Tea Parties to shut up. The mantra is we're going to cause violence uh, when there's no evidence of that. I'm really concerned about them creating a provocation or, or hyping something because clearly uh, the, the things they've done politically are political suicide. Uh, and, and now they're demonizing you and Ron Paul, calling you both harbingers and, and, and enablers of, of extremism and violence. I am a harbinger and enabler of individual freedom, of the primacy of the individual over the government, the indispensability of the free market to human prosperity, and of our natural rights, which most governments don't give a hoot about. We are back live. Final segment, ladies and gentlemen. Retransmission starts in T-minus six minutes at Infowars.com and the audio streams and on AM and FMs everywhere. Judge Napolitano, uh, we're seeing massive demonization from MSNBC, CNN, Southern Poverty Law Center, all these groups. Now they're even saying Ron Paul's bad, you're bad. They're claiming that we're going to stir up violence with our First Amendment right criticizing corrupt government. I mean, this is pretty dangerous. It's dangerous if they think that by our uh, that, that, that they can interfere with our freedom of speech. It's dangerous for Bill Clinton to say that those who question the government, that those who think taxes are too high, that those who think that, that life begins at the moment of conception and that the right to keep and bear arms is a natural right are dangerous people. We are traditional Americans who are defending our freedom and will not be silenced by those who are attempting to do so. But I think it's backfiring on them. I mean, people are really seeing through this race card. You know, I've been to many Tea Parties. You know that. Many in the state of Texas, uh, in Ohio, in uh, Arizona, in Florida. I've not, I've not detected a hint of racism, of homophobia, of any of the nonsense that these people that dislike the Tea Partiers claim is there. What they dislike is the fact that the great middle class has finally been awakened and has finally agreed to read the Constitution, and has finally recognized that we have a government that doesn't respect the Constitution, doesn't honor it, doesn't read it, doesn't even know what it means, thinks it can write any law, regulate any event, tax any behavior, whether it's in the Constitution or not. And let me tell you, when ordinary people confront members of Congress and say, where is this in the Constitution? Alex, I have not seen an awareness of freedom like this since Barry Goldwater ran for president against Lyndon Johnson in 1964. And the establishment in both parties fears this. Is that why Lindsey Graham is now caving in on open borders and caving in on carbon taxes? And caving in on, I, on ID cards? Absolutely, because he's part of the establishment. He's not a lover of freedom like you and me and most of the people listening to us. He's more interested in his own power than he is in the, in the constitutional liberties and natural rights of those he represents. We've only got a couple minutes left here. Uh, I wanted to bring up the Goldman Sachs situation. I see them picking some of the smaller uh, things that Goldman's done so they can then derail a real investigation. I see it as a big whitewash. Where do you stand on I, that? I agree with you. I think that Goldman will cave on this litigation brought by the SEC, which is bogus and which is frivolous. I can tell you why if you want to go into that. I think that Goldman will cave on it in order to avoid more serious investigations like how could the chairman of Goldman Sachs also have been the chairman of the New York Federal Reserve at the same time? That's the kind of stuff that they don't want to investigate it, so they'll cave on this one. Yesterday, when Lloyd, Lloyd Blankfein appeared before uh, Carl Levin, 
He said, yes, I'm in favor of the uh, of the financial regulation the president wants. Nobody at Wall Street in their right mind is in favor of it unless you want to curry favor with the establishment so that after they enact this legislation, they'll leave you alone. Well, that's the word from the Texas Banking Association. They say the mega banks are going to be given new power to go and consolidate their competition. The worst.